Hello, this is the course of Introduction to Data Science. And in this video, I would like to continue about the Python introduction. As you already learned from the previous section on this Jupyter Notebook, you learn about the basic function, basic iteration, okay? and you already know about the course based quiz. I will continue with the next section, which is about the basic data structure. If you already joined the data structure class, I guess it's not a very difficult issue, but I know that there are some students who have not joined the data structure. So I, please allow me to repeat, please allow me to review a little bit about some basic data structure in Python. So Python provides a built-in basic data structure such as array and this array called as list. And there will be other kind of data structures. Um, I cannot explain everything, but at least I will explain the important data structure in Python. And those data structure are mostly used for the data stuff, especially in the data science. In those basic data structure will be the basis for analyzing any data format. The first we will learn about list. Okay, so in the list, it stores a series of items in a particular order. So what is items? So items it can be anything. It can be a product. It can be number. It can be a thing. It can be an address, it can be a color, so everything. Any item can be regarded as the uh, item in the list. Okay? And the way to define a list is to use the square bracket. So this is the square bracket. And you can access the item using an index. So if you already learn in the computer programming, you can access the array using index. Such as uh, in Java, you can start the array from zero. If you are using um, other programming languages, such as C, C also start the index from zero. If you use like R, R use the index from one. Okay? So different programming languages will have different number for the indexing. So note the index list in Python start from zero until n minus one. Okay, let's see, one by one. Now I have a list, okay. And I want to make a list. So you can uh, say that this is a list of colors and I have three items, red, blue, and green. And then I need to start with the square bracket and I need to stop with the closing square bracket. And don't forget to put a variable name. So the variable name can be anything. Let's say I want to make this as the colors. And the colors will have three items. This is red, blue, and green. And those items will be in the list. So I would like to make a list. So you can just run this one by pressing Shift Control. Okay. You already learned from the first uh, video. You can uh, do with Shift Control or uh, Shift plus Enter, or yeah, you can have another which is the control plus enter so if you have shift plus enter after you execute this one it will go to the next line if you just control plus enter you will just execute one cell and then the cursor will stay in that cell okay? so we call it this is one cell okay now i have colors red blue and green Okay, and if you want to print, okay, let me just give one more cell below. Okay, just press the plus button and you can get a new cell. And then you want to print colors. So you can just call the variable name and then you can press shift enter. And you can see that colors consist of three items, red, blue, and green. Let's say I want to get the first item in a list. So the first color is a variable name. I want to call the colors zero. What does it mean? Yeah, we want to get the items in the index zero. So this is the item index zero. 
this is item in index one and this is item in index two. So if I run this, then you will get the item in index zero, which is red. Yeah. And what about if I want, yeah, if you have a very long list yeah, and sometimes you do not know how many items do you have. In order to check the length of the item, you can just uh, put the, uh, you want to print length of the colors. Okay, so you want to know the length. It means uh, you want to get how many items in that variable. Now I have three. Okay, so there are three items in the variable colors. And let's say I do not want to use the number three to get the last item, but I I can use minus one. Okay, what does it mean by minus one? You can see here we have red, blue, and green. And if I call the minus one, it means the last item. The last item is green. Then if you use the square bracket, and the square bracket here is to indicate the index. Okay, So please distinguish that this square bracket with the item represent the list but this square bracket with numbers it represent the index okay and if i run this you can get the green as the last index if you want to loop okay, you already learned about loop now i would like to know every color in the variable colors okay so i can loop through a list and you can define your own variable. Let's say I have col. So the col is just my definition okay. and you want to print for every item in the variable colors. So you can get this one and you print col. It means you want to print the first. Okay. The first is red and then after the first, I know that there is another item, so I print the second. And then after the second, I know that there is another item, so I print the third. Okay. Yeah. If you have a list, you can start with a blank list. For example, other col, other color. Okay. And let's say I start with the blank, and then I want to append. Append means I want to add. Okay. Add an item okay so it means i want to add yellow to other color and then next item i want to add brown to the other color next i want to append or i want to add an item purple to other color so how many do i have now because i have one i have two and then i have three so there will be three items so if you print the list there will be three items and the first item is yellow brown and it's the second purple is the third okay when you use a list you can also make a uh, numbers okay so you instead of the uh, categorical data or instead of string data you can make numbers suppose you have variable name squares and just make a blank list okay so this one I call as a blank list. Okay? And when you have this blank list, uh, you, let's suppose I want to have a value from one until 11. Okay, do you still remember? What is the meaning one comma 11? So the range will be from one until 11 minus one. So the number will be from one until 10. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And for every numbers in the range of one until 10, squares, okay, what is squares? Square is the variable name, this. And I would like to append. What does it mean by append? I want to add the item. What is the item? Oh, the item is the square. X multiply, multiply two, it means the square. So one, power of two or power one square two is one two square two is four three square two is nine four square two 
it's 16. So if you have this one, if you run, then you will get the value 1, 4, 9, 16, because the number will be until 10. So 10 power of 2, it will be 100. The list, you can also use uh, what we call as the list comprehensions. List comprehensions means I would like to put the Python statement inside the square bracket. Okay. So here is the square bracket. You know that the square bracket is a place to put the, the elements or the items. Okay. But, but you can see here x power of 2. For x in range 1, 11. What does it mean? Oh, this is the same with this one. Is it right? Okay. So by the same way, in this cell number 8, you need like 1, 2, 3 lines for getting the squares. But for this cell, you only need one line in order to get the same result. Okay. So this is the same meaning with the previous cell. The meaning is, you need to put the x power of 2 for every numbers x for every number x in the range of 1 until 10 okay so we want to express that one in the list comprehensions so we can get the squares and the square are the same with the previous result, okay. So if you run, then the, the numbers are the same. There's a concept about slice. Okay? Slice it means I want to cut the list. So in the next uh, video, I will also teach you another kind of slice. But let's do the slicing on a list. If you have a list like this one, top members, the top members contain of one, two, three, four, five, six. So there are six person. Park, Lee, Kim, Choi, Cho, Kang. Okay, so let's suppose this is the family name uh, in Korea. And I want to know the first two. Okay, how can I know the first two? So the uh, list contains of three items actually. You can have the start, stop, and the interval. Okay. So the start and stop and interval will be separated by colon. Okay. Now, if I have only one item, okay, if I have only one number, then it will be the same with this one. So I just want to select one index. But if I have two, I need to distinguish with the colon. Okay. The colon, colon, okay, this is colon. The colon means it's a separator. It means I want to know the first two elements. So what is the first two elements? This is zero and this is one. So there are two. So we want to get the park and lead. What about the last, uh, the first three elements? Then we can get with column three. So one, two, three. Okay. So if you see this one, then you will get park, lead, and park, and lead, and Kim. Okay. Let's suppose if, okay, if you want to see the, um, okay, I just type this on top members and then I want to see from two until five, okay, let's suppose. Then what you can see is the result will be Kim, Choi, and Cho. So the result is Kim, Kim is the index zero, one, two, two, three, four, Five. Oh, five is not included because we know that this is from the number which is two until n minus one. Okay. If you want to copy the list, let's say I want to copy everything from the top members, then you can just put a new variable and then just call the variable before the, the, that is the top members, and then put the colon. So it means you want to copy everything from the top members into the copy of 
members. So the copy top members will have the same value. Okay. Now, you can also do with the conditional test. Let's say I want to check whether Puck is available in the top members. If you check this one, oh yes, true. Okay, so true means there is Puck in the top members. Or you can also use not in. Not in means not available in. Okay. And I want to check Lee is not in the top members. False. What does it mean? So it means Lee is in the top members. Okay. A list can contain multiple items with different data types. Let's say a special list, I can put green and then I put the integer and I can put also a float number. Yeah, so it means one list can, can contain different data types. Okay, I would like to do the learning check. Create a list of your courses taken in the semester. Okay, can you create the list using input function? Oh, okay. So how many courses do you, did you take in this semester? One, three, five, seven. Okay, then try to do with the loop. Okay, and then for example, you know that the uh, course that you took, if the courses, the number of courses that you take are seven. Okay? So you can just do the loop until seven times and then do the input. Okay, you know how to input from the users. And every time you input a course name, then put the course name into a variable. Or you can put directly the input value into the list. Can you make it? Okay. Try to do it. Uh, I think this also just a learning check. You don't need to uh, submit it. So just try by yourself. Create a list of the powers of two. Okay. For example, if uh, input a number of five, the result will be two, four, eight, 16, 32. Okay. Can you understand? Okay. So um, again, you don't need to submit the result but try yourself okay so the first is just using the input the second is uh, the power of two the power of two means yeah you know the power of two two power of zero and then two oh yeah just start from one okay so for my for me two power of two which is four two power of three which is eight 2 power of 4, which is 16. 2 power of 5, which is 32. And so on. Okay. The next is tuple. Okay. Tuple are similar to list, but the items in a tuple cannot be modified. Let's say if you want to modify the list, okay, you know the copy top members. Now we have Park, Lee, Kim, Choi, Chu, Kang. Okay. Now I want to change. Let me have one more line. And let me use this number. Okay. I want to change the item zero. And I want to change with, for example, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's my name. And then. If you check this copy top members, if you run, then the first item has been changed to yeah here. It's not work again, but now it becomes yeah here. Now what happened to tuple? Okay. Tuple are similar to list, but the items in the tuple cannot be modified. Okay, so this is the important keyword. In tuple, we define the variables using brackets so the brackets is just a simple parenthesis now let's see if i have top colors the top colors are red orange yellow green blue indigo violet so it's the seven main colors okay and i put this bracket so this is the 
common way to use the tuple. So if you use the list, then you need to use the square bracket. But if you use list, you need to specify with the common bracket. So the same with the list, we can select the element using the square bracket. So after you have this top colors, you can select the elements. So the elements will be using square bracket. So I, let's suppose I want to see the index one. Then you can see the index one is orange. I want to see the index minus one. Then you can see index minus one is violet. Now I would like to show you what about if I want to change the red color, which is the index zero. Okay, I want to change the index color, which is the index zero, with something like mm, what do you want? Brown. Okay, there is no color brown. So if I press this one, then it's error. Why? Because as I mentioned this before, a tuple cannot be modified. So the element that you have before, which is red, is already fixed. It is a static item. You cannot change it. Okay? So when you change, it comes to error. The next is dictionary. Okay? So about the dictionary, you know the dictionary is yeah, somehow is similar with the dictionary that you know. Um, in Korea, it's called by Sajon. Okay? So in the dictionary, it contains at least two. Okay? You know the key and the value. So the key means something that is unique. Okay? Let's suppose I want to know what is uh, good morning in Korea. So maybe you can say, oh, there are many uh, ways to express good morning. Yeah, good morning is the key. The value is the translation uh, items. The same with this one. I want to see the key, and yeah, the key is before the colon, and the value is after the colon. Okay. Now I have name, and the name is the key, and the key has a value. So the value will be after the colon, and put name and key are string and after you have this key and value you just separate with comma and you have another key and value and then you have comma and then you have another key and value okay. so in this case the key is string and the value is a number and remember when you do with the dictionary you need to use the so in the dictionary a dictionary contains a key and value. You need to use the curly bracket okay, to indicate the dictionary. Okay. Now, if you have this curly bracket, curly bracket, and you have the key value, and you have the key value, and you have the key value, then it is a dictionary. There will be another things that you need to use this curly bracket instead of the bracket and the uh, list. So if you have this one and you want to check course, okay, so the course contain name and the name is data science, the type then the type is online and the students are uh, 50. Okay. When you want to assess the value, if you still remember when you get the uh, list, you will use the square bracket to access. And then you need to say something like the number. Okay. So the number means the index. Let's say the index zero or the index one. The same with the uh, list and tuple, you can access the value. But now, how to access the value is you need to call the key by calling the key. So the key in the course name now is name. So you need to use course and put the square bracket and then call the key, which is name. 
Okay. And let's see if I have another way to, if I want to course type, okay. I want to know the type of this course. Okay, we can get online. And I want to know the value of students, okay. Then you can change students and you can get 50. Yeah, we can also have a new value, okay. So a new, key, oh, it's not key, key, value pair. Okay, so in the course, this is the variable name. And then because you already have like name, type, students. Now I want to put one more, which is tool. So just put the tool as the key and then I put the value, which is Jupyter Notebook. Then after you do this one, the remaining, uh, the existing will keep in the dictionary and you can add with one more uh, key and value. Okay. In the dictionary, you can do loop. So it means you want to show all the items and the values. The way to do the loop is using the, uh, you need to define two attributes. So the first is the key, the so ADT is the key and the value is the value of the uh, dictionary for one attribute or for one key. And you need to go with the course dot item. So item means, so for every item or one single item. So this is one item, this is one item and this is one item and after I know those items I want to distinguish it between the add and value so I would like to print add and value and put them into the string okay what happens if I don't put the string it will be error you can see yeah if you use this one then yeah, you, there will be no uh, errors in this case. But if you don't put this, okay, there is one value which is not a string, that is 50. Okay. In order to uh, show those values, you need to use string. So this is a way to convert the numbers into string. And after you have this one, then I can just um, get all the values, okay. And the other thing that we can learn is how to look for only the keys. The first is the items and the other is the keys. In the keys, you need to look the only key, name, type, students, tool. And the last one, I want to look only the values. Okay? So you just call the key values and then the values are data size online 50 and Jupyter notebook okay okay the last one from this section is about set set is a collection of unique element on which unordered and unindexed and in this case um, you can also you need to use the curly bracket so the same with dictionary but it's different what is the different the difference is you don't need to put the colon. Okay? There is no colon here. Let's see, element. Element consists of A, B, A, C, B, D. Okay, there, is, there are two A and there are two B. Now, if I check this one, if you, I run this, then the result will be B, A, C, D. Why? There are two A, so they, want to find the unique element. What is unique element? It means there is no redundant. If the elements are redundant, then they will just count it as one. Okay. And also, there is no order. Okay. There is no order means, maybe human can distinguish directly that this should be from A and then B and then C and then D but computer didn't know about that. So the result is not ordered. And also there is no index. Okay? There is no index means I don't know whether this is the index zero, index one, index two, index three. So uh, there's a the difference between the list and set. Okay, so if you want to try, yeah, 
Mm. You can try, but yeah, there will be maybe is okay. There is no way to access the index zero using this set element. Now I would like to print the element. Yeah, yeah, this element is uh, B A C D, and then let's suppose I have to Z. Okay, one, two, three, and three, four, five. And I want to know the union. So what is union? So if you learn already the Kyung Yong Suhak, the basic mathematics, okay. In our department, we have one course about the basic mathematics. I guess you will learn about the theory of set. So union means you want to combine all the items. And if you find one item that is the same between those two sets, then you will just call it as one. So you can see this one, two, three, and then three, four, five. So when do you put this union, the union means this symbol. Okay, the symbol is the vertical line. Vertical line is the union, and you can get the value is one, two, three, four, five. In the section, in the section means you want to know what is the value that exists in S1 and S2. So we get three. Complement. Complement means I want to know the value if I have the S2 and minus the value in S1. What is S2? S2 is 3, 4, 5. And then minus the value in S1. Because 3 exists in the S1, so the value result, the result will be only 4 and 5. So that's the A, complement. And the last one is I just want to find the distinguish result between those two sets. If I have S1 and S2, so just omit the intersection. It means the result will be only one, two, four, five. Three are the same, so we do not include the three. Okay, learning check. Can you distinguish among the basic data structure? What is the difference of list, tuple, dictionary, and set? Yeah? If you type the list, then you will use the square bracket. Okay. What about tuple? Tuple, you will use the common bracket. What about dictionary? Dictionary, you will use the curly bracket. What about set? Set also using the curly bracket. The difference between the dictionary and set is just use the uh, colon to distinguish between key and value. But in the set, there is no such thing. Okay, so when you use this, this one, and then when you use top tuple, this one, and then when you use dictionary, this one, and when you use the set, that is the one. Okay. Can we use list to write elements with different data types? Number two, can we use this to write elements with different data types? Yes. Okay. So that's all for the basic markdown with Jupyter Notebook and yeah in the next uh, video I will try to explain about the basic uh, number especially arrays in numbers with Python okay so thank you for listening this course and see you on the next video